It's Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribe feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. And now here we go, friends, to Duffy's Tavern with Slapsy Maxi Rosenblum, Arthur Treacher, Bert Gordon as the Mad Russian, Hazel Sherman as Miss Duffy, and starring Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Hello, Duffy's Tavern. Where do you late meet the Archie the man just speaking? Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Uh, what's doing? Uh, nothing much. We had a visit from the building inspector. Well, I guess he likes to laugh as well as the next guy. <laughs> and I'm afraid he might give the tavern a bad report, Duffy. Yeah, he says if the termites ever stop holding hands, the whole place will collapse. <laughs> Also made a wisecrack about the way our floor slants, you know. He says we're the only building in town where the mice have to wear skid chains. <laughs> uh, and by the way, uh, speaking of rodents, about the treacher, uh, <laughs> is threatening to quit his job here. Well, he's having trouble with the customers, you know. They claim he shortchanges them on account of he's British. Yeah, they say every time he serves them alphabet soup, he drops the H's. <laughs> But I hate to lose a guy, Duffy. You know, he's got a lot of good qualities, you know. For, for instance, he's got a great knack for saving our hash without that guilty expression on his face. <laughs> huh? Well, I think he got an offer from Grogan's across the street, but I'm going to try to talk him out of it. Well, you know the old line, Duffy. Uh, gratitude, chance for advancement, uh, all we've done for him, money ain't everything. <laughs> you old sucker bitch. <laughs> Well, certainly he'll bite, don't I, Fulford, every time I ask you for a raise? <laughs> well, just leave him to me, Duffy. I'll call you back. <clears throat> Say, uh, treat you. What is it, old chap? Say, is there anything to the rumor that you're planning to leave this joint? In a word, indubitably. <laughs> Ain't got another word hanging around, have you? <laughs> oh, yes, I have, but I can't use it now. <laughs> Ladies at the bar, you know. Oh, please, treat you. Before you do anything trash, leave uh, leave us reason out your beef's logical. Now, answer me. Do you object to Duffy working you eighteen hours a day, seven days a week? Definitely. Well, I suppose you also object to Duffy's habit of bleeding his employees. Well, it's not that so much. What I resent is his selling the blood to the Red Cross. <laughs> And I suppose you, uh, you also object to not being paid no salary? Decidedly. Preacher, I'm afraid you didn't enter this discussion with an open mind. <laughs> Don't you realize that money can't buy happiness? Perhaps not, but with money, one can have such a jolly time being miserable. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'll pack my snake bite kit and prepare to leave. Mm. Hello? Okay, Miss Duffy, it's for you. Who is it? Vera Fogarty? Uh, no, it ain't Vera Fogarty. Strangely enough, it's a man. A man? Give me that phone. Hello, Miss Duffy speaking, and I'd love to. <laughs> what? Archie, it's Papa. So what? Since when are you so choosy? <laughs> are you a wise guy? Uh, what is it, Papa? Yeah, that's right, Arthur Treacher's quitting. Well, he wants a salary. <laughs> I know it's unreasonable, Papa. But you know how help are these days. We've tried everything to get him to stay. We even told him he don't have to eat here. <laughs> what, Papa? Why don't I do what? Use my feminine what? <laughs> what, Papa? <laughs> my. What do you say? He says I should vamp treat you into staying. Theta Barra rides again. Hmm. Oh, oh, Arthur. I beg your pardon? Uh, Mr. Treacher, you have always thought of me as the daughter of your employer. Uh, haughty and, uh, shall we say unattainable. 
Now I want you to think of me as the girl of your dream. I'll never sleep again. Oh, Arthur, don't fight your true feelings for me. If I stood close to you and closed my eyes and tilted my head back and back and back, don't you know what would happen? Eventually, old girl, you'd fall flat on your chignon. <laughs> oh, Arthur, you're just bashful. Here, look. My lips are puckered. My eyes are closed. I'm putting my arms around you. Miss Duffy, leave go of me. Oh, where's Treacher? He escaped in time. Oh. Now, wait a minute. Uh... Here comes a customer. Well, well, good evening, sir. How do you do? Well. It's the mad Russian. Glad to see you, Russian. What goes with you? I have just been to see my doctor. Your doctor, huh? Anything wrong? No, he's in the pink of condition. <laughs> Uh, I mean, is there anything wrong with you? <laughs> Physically, that is. Nothing wrong. The doctor says I'm healthy as a horse. Healthy as a horse, huh? Yes, and he should know. <laughs> Tell me, why? He's a horse doctor. <laughs> Look, Russian, why do you go to a horse doctor? You ain't a horse. Shh, not so loud. He might hear you and raise the rates. <laughs> No, if you'll pardon me, I will take my pill. Your pill? Okay, here's a glass of mm, water. Thank you. Hey, what's that string doing on the pill? How else am I going to take it three times a day? <laughs> pray, 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 tell me. Mm -hmm. There is a rumor hanging on the grapevine that Arthur Treacher has escaped. Well, you might, so to speak. We had a little difference of opinion over money. Monia? What's Monia? As I always say, be it ever so humble, there is no place like home. What's that got to do with money? Plenty. I owe six months' rent. <laughs> Which reminds me, I am in the job in the market for a job. Uh... In the job for a market. Either way. <laughs> Which way would you like it? <laughs> I am in the market for a job. Well, a job you want, huh? Tell me, what can you do? <laughs> he asked me what I could do. <laughs> Come to think of it, what can I do? I'll tell you what you can do. You can go across the street to Grogan's and see your father treat you as working there. Wait. You are asking me to be a double-dealing, low-down, double-crossing spy? Well, uh... Me, a spy? I'll give you six free drinks on the house. Six free drinks? Yeah. Shake hands with Matzah Harry. <laughs> Here's a word from RCA Victor. Friends, if you study the room you're in right now, you'll realize that you can't buy furnishings piece by piece without the final picture in mind. It's that way when you buy television, too. Now, here's how to get the most out of your television dollar. Consider the complete home entertainment picture, radio and records, as well as TV. Instead of having many instruments scattered about, why not settle for one fine cabinet that costs less and contains your complete home entertainment needs? Such a one-cabinet combination is the RCA Victor Rutland. Open the doors on the Rutland's 18th century cabinet, and you'll find 17-inch million-proof television with its clear, steady pictures, AM and FM radio, and the Victrola 45 record changer, as well as a changer for 78 and 33 and one-third. Yes, so many more families are becoming television owners this week. If you're one of them, remember to see and listen to the exciting new Rutland at your RCA Victor dealers. You know, Miss Duffy, I don't blame Treacher if he takes that job with Drogans. What do you mean? Well, the lousy way your old man treats people. You know, after all, they... 
There comes a time in the course of human events when all men is created equal. Archie, you stole that speech from somebody. I did not. Then where did you get it? I got it from Thomas Jefferson. That's the trouble. You'd be better off if you'd listen to Papa instead of your dopey friend. Stuffy, Thomas Jefferson is not a friend of mine. He happens to be the deceased father of our country. George Washington was the father of our country. You think a country this big only had one father? <laughs> What's that got to do with Arthur Treacher? He's an Englishman. What was George Washington? An Englishman. Touche. <laughs> If you ask me, I should have been just the smartest creature and quit working for that old man of yours long ago. Hmm. What price gratitude? Gratitude to who? To Papa, who made you what you are today. You worthless good for nothing. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, don't give me them honeyed words. Boy, when I think what I could have been if I didn't come to work here ten years ago. What could you have been? What could I have been? <laughs> It so happens that the very morning your father hired me, I turned down a splendid opportunity to go on relief. <laughs> from there on, who knows? Archie, my boy, come here. Come here? Excuse me, what is it? Spy number 6420J reporting. Oh, good, 6420J. Hey, why the umbrella over your head? I am working undercover. <laughs> Well, that's very sleuthy. Now, uh, tell me, what's the dope? I mean, outside of you. Just a minute. Are we alone? Yes. But who is that standing beside you? That's you. I know. <laughs> I know that. But can I be trusted? Guess we'll have to take a chance. <clears throat> Tell me, what's doing over at Grogan's? I regret to report that Preacher is working with the enemy. Well, then there's only one thing to do. We got to hire another waiter. What's about giving me the job? Me? Look, I'm sorry, Russian. Uh, we got to have somebody a little more high class, you know, a little more refined than you. Hello? Bowery Bum Personnel Service? Uh, this is Duffy's Tavern. Uh, we need a waiter. The qualifications? Well, you know, uh, somebody who knows the cultured little touches, like uh, preparing a tasty Mickey Finn, or pouring iodine on a steak to make it look rare. You know, to subtle little nasties. Huh? The hours? Well, he works from 7 to 3. At 7 a.m., of course. No, to 3 is a.m., too. <laughs> huh? The salary? Uh, 20 a week and uh, 50%. That's right. Uh, 50% of what he shortchanges the customers. <laughs> you got a man? Okay, send him down. <laughs> What are you doing, Archie? I'm composing a business letter to me competitor for stealing art to treat you. Oh, what does it say? Well, I'll read it. Uh, my dear Mr. Grogan, I would like to tell you what I think of you, but I am far too genteel. Suffice it to say that you stink. <laughs> well, that's telling him. Yeah. It is such people as you that cause ill feeling between labor and management by offering a living wage. <laughs> In closing, may I say that you are nothing but a crook, a swindler, and a no-good crumb. I remain the same. <laughs> Signed, Archie. P.S. In addition to the above, Grogan, you are the most gruesomest man that I have ever seen. Hi, bud. Grogan, you are one of the most gruesomest men I have ever seen. <laughs> now, what can I do for you, Dimples? <laughs> Well, I'm from the employment agency. I'm your new waiter. A waiter? You don't look much like a waiter. Too pretty, huh? <laughs> pretty? You look more beat up than our food here. <laughs> so what do you want for 20 a week? Shirley Temple? 
Hey, you know, you're pretty fast with the repartee, you know. Hey, would you mind answering a few questions? Okay. What's the category? <laughs> well, <laughs> the quiz kid. First, what's your name? Rosenblum. Mm -hmm. Born? Yep. <laughs> I've heard that one a million times, but this is the first time I ever doubted it. Uh, tell me, what education did you have? Uh, did you go to high school? High school? Yeah. Does that come before or after college? <laughs> Let's skip it. I think I did. <laughs> I mean, did you ever go to school, stupid? Yeah, and I came out stupid, too. I'll buy that. Well, any other questions? Uh, yeah, how long you been a waiter? How long? Well, what time did you call the agency? <laughs> Look, but... What? Where did you ever work? Oh, Madison Square Garden, the Legion Stadium, the St. Nicholas Arena. Just a minute, Rosenblum. You ain't Maxie Rosenblum and a fighter. Yep, that's me. Maxie Rosenblum, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you standing up. Uh. <laughs> you know, I've seen you fight a dozen times, Maxie. I, I remember the night you fought King Levinsky. Yeah, that King Levinsky. What an unfair fighter. What do you mean, unfair? Well, every time I stuck my thumb in his eye, he'd follow me. <laughs> It's too late for me to make a comeback. <laughs> and, uh, I remember the night that Mickey Walker flattened you with that right hook in the first round. Ah, oh, that Mickey Walker was just lucky. Lucky? Yeah, but George just happened to be where he was swinging, that's all. Uh, you never did fight Joe Lewis, did you? Nah, he was afraid. Afraid, huh? Yeah, he was afraid he'd kill me. Huh? Logical. Look, Maxie, how come you gave up fighting? Well, I had trouble with my eyes. Trouble with your eyes, huh? Yeah, I had so... Uh, I lost the place, too. Yeah, I had so with my eyes. <laughs> yeah, after the second round, I always seemed to be looking up at me opponent, opponent, uh, at, at the other guy I was fighting. You wouldn't take that word out. <laughs> <laughs> Look up at the other guy. <laughs> now, look, maybe I'll hire you. You know, I'm, I'm partial to fighters, Mike. See, I used to be a fighter myself, you know. You were a fighter? Feel that wrist. Feel that bright cuspid. <laughs> no, that ain't chopped liver. <laughs> it ain't muscles. <laughs> well, muscles ain't everything. You see, I was very clever, very scientific. I used to slither around that ring like a needle. In fact, they used to call me Archie the Ringworm. <laughs> You know, that I believe. Uh -huh. Ahem. Oh, look, quiet, Miss Duffy. Hey, what a beautiful dame. <laughs> this guy's punchier than I thought he was. Archie, will you please introduce me while he's still on his feet? Okay, Miss Duffy, shake hands with Maxie Rosenblum, one of the most powerful fighters in the world. Formally, of course. <laughs> oh, cut out the formally introductions. Mm. Shake hands, Miss Duffy. Glad to. Ouch, what a grip. <laughs> Hello, you could fight. <laughs> she got that grip rolling out the battleships. <laughs> Archie, that is not true. No? I got it rolling back from battleships. <laughs> I know it had something to do with defense. <laughs> oh, Slapsy. Yes? I'm not doing anything tonight. Swell. Let's go over to Stillman's Gymnasium and spar a few rounds, huh? <laughs> oh. oh, please, Maxie, that would hardly be a fair match. Mm, maybe you're right. You've been out of the ring much too long. <laughs> Look, Miss Duffy, seven, eight, nine, ten. You mean? Out. <clears throat> Now, Maxie, about this job here as a waiter. Mm -hmm. Now, here's our standard waiter's contract. Just close your eyes and sign here. Sign my name? Yeah. 
If I could write, do you think I'd work in a joint like this? If you can't write, how can you take down the customer's orders? I got a system. You got a system, huh? Yeah, I make X's. Uh-huh. One X for, for a salad, two X's for a soup, and three X's for meat and coffee. Three X's for both meat and coffee? Yep. Well, how can you tell which is which? Easy. If you drink it, it's coffee. <laughs> Maybe I'd better give this guy a further test. Now, let's imagine I'm a customer sitting here at the table, Maxie. What do you do first? Well, I tuck the napkin under your chin. Well, that's correct as far as it goes, but what do you do if I ain't wearing a collar? If you ain't wearing a collar, what do you need a napkin for? <laughs> Maxie, one uses a napkin irregardless of whether he is attired in a collar or not. That's considered good form. And as a waiter, you must not forget Emily Post. Hmm... Why didn't you tell me you came in with a dame? Look, uh... <clears throat> all right, are there any further questions you'd like to know? Yeah. How come you won't pay me 50 a week instead of 20? 50? You're asking pretty high wages for somebody with no experience. Yeah, but don't forget, it's much harder work when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and you don't know nothing about it. Uh, look, nothing doing, Maxie. It's 20 a week. Take it or leave it. Okay, but before I start, I want one thing misunderstood. <laughs> what? Anybody that says anything around here I don't like gets a punch in the nose. You understand that? Does that go for everybody? Everybody, including you, ringworm. <laughs> oh, yeah? Now, look, I'm the manager here, and I'll say anything I want any time I feel like it. You will, huh? Any time I feel like it. Okay. Go ahead and say it. Well, right now, I don't feel like it. <laughs> Archie, I'm afraid we'll have to get rid of that slapsy maxi. What's the matter? A customer just spilled some soup, and Mr. Rosenblum is mopping it up. Well, what's wrong with that? He's using the customer for the mop. <laughs> Well, at least he's neat. <laughs> Say, Archie, huh? what's wrong with that new waiter? Why, what's the matter? He's punching me in the nose for just asking one simple question. What was the question? I just asked him, how's your cauliflower today? <laughs> See, I'll have to take care of this guy. Hey, Maxie. What do you want, jerk? <laughs> if I wasn't such a coward, I'd thrash this guy. <laughs> Look, Maxie, didn't them five guys you just served five beers to leave just now? Yeah, they left. What about it? Where's the two bits for the five beers? Oh, they didn't pay me two bits for the beers. They just left me a tip. How much was the tip? Two bits. <laughs> you want to make something about it? Uh, well, no, I was just thinking what generous guys they were. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, I'm in the middle of eating. Don't bother me again, huh? And uh, bring me another plate of hash, huh? Yes, sir, one hash coming up. <clears throat> I'm afraid I've hired a playboy. <clears throat> what am I going to do about this guy? Oh, I say, Albin, I'm back. Well, Arthur Treacher, so the Portugal son has returned. <laughs> but I should think you'd be ashamed to walk into this place. I am. <laughs> That's why I always cover my face with my hat. I mean, you turned turncoat on us and you went over to work for Grogan's. On the contrary, I merely went to Grogan's to study the methods of our competitor. Well, what'd you find out? Oh, the food is good, the kitchen is clean, the plates are spotless, the entire place is spick and span. That's what we're up against, dirty competition. <laughs> but, teacher, I'm glad you're back and I'm going to pay your salary. A salary? Yes, sir. I'll give you a buck a week. Oh, goody, a dollar a week, eh? Oh, now I can keep a harem. <laughs> hmm? Hey, Maxie, come in. You still beating your gums? Look, I'm sorry to say that a situation has arose. Uh, the teacher, our former head waiter, has re-enlisted with us, see? Which naturally leaves you with very little seniority to fall back on. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, are you trying to tell me I'm fired? Well, frankly... Do you know what happened to the last guy that fired me? No. Neither does he. 
So think it over. Actually, right? now, leave us not make a scene. I'll have to ask you to turn in your bar rag and brass knuckles and leave quietly. Well, what about my week's salary? Week's salary? You've only been here 20 minutes. What? Okay, we'll pay you a week's salary. <laughs> Let's see here. 5, 10, 15, 20. Hey, I'm Maxie, 20 cents. And if you don't mind, I'd like a receipt. You'd like a receipt, huh? Yeah. Okay, here. I'll give you one. Ow! Hello? Stop his tavern. Teacher, the acting manager speaking. <laughs> Oh, hello, Mr. Duffy. Archie? He just went out. <laughs> oh, I should say he'll be out for about uh, ten minutes. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist's. Listen again next week, friends, to Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night transcribed feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. By Chesterfield, the cigarette that has for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The best cigarette for you to smoke. And by the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, neuralgia. Listen tomorrow evening for The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, the Saturday night feature of the All-Star Festival. <laughs> <laughs>